In Python, we can use a very useful data structure called a list. We use lists very frequently in our programs. To create a list, we put the name that we want to give the list, followed by an equal sign, followed by a set of square brackets inside of which are the items that we want stored in our list. In this program, line 1 creates a list named pets. Inside the square brackets we have 1, 2, 3 strings and each string is a separate item in our list. We call the items in a list the elements. Each element in a list is separated from the next element by a comma. If you have watched the video about Python strings, then you know that in a string, the first character of the string is at index position 0, the second character is at index position 1, etc. The same counting method applies to lists. So in this program, the string croc is at index position 0, the string spider is at index position 1, and the string tiger is at index position 2. Line 2 of the program prints out the list named pets. So when the program is run, we see croc, spider, tiger. Line 3 of the program outputs what is at index position 0 of the pets list. So croc is output. In this program, Line 1 again creates a list named pets containing three elements. Line 2 creates a variable named num of pets and then uses the len function to find out how many elements the list named pets has. We can see that the list has three elements, croc, spider and tiger, so the integer 3 gets stored in variable num of pets. The last line of the program prints out what has been stored in variable num of pets inside a sentence. Python has lots of built-in functions and methods that you can use with lists, and the len function is one you will probably need to use quite often. We very regularly use for loops to look at each element in a list in turn. You may hear this described as iterating through the list. This program again creates a list named pets in line 1. Line 2 creates a for loop. Remember, each time around the for loop, a different integer will be stored in variable count depending upon what is in the brackets. So in this for loop, the integers put into count will start at 0 and will stop 1 before the length of pets. In other words, we'll stop 1 before 3. If you are unsure about how for loops work, then watch the for loops video to find out. Each time round the loop, the program outputs whatever is stored in variable count followed by whatever element is at index position count in the pets list. So the first time round the loop, the program outputs at index 0 is, followed by croc. The second time round the loop, the program outputs at index 1 is, followed by spider. The third time round the loop, the program outputs at index 2 is, followed by tiger. This program again creates a list named pets with three elements in the first line. Line 2 then outputs what is stored in the pets list at the start of the program. Line 3 creates a variable named new pet and stores inside it the string slug. Line 4 uses the append method. We use append to add a new element to the end of a list. So our list started with three elements. And line 4 tells Python to append, to add, 
whatever is stored in variable new pet to the end of our list. So by the end of line 4, our list gets an extra element which contains the string slug. The last line prints what list pets contains at the end of the program. We quite often need to add, delete and change what is stored in our list during a program. When we first create a list, we often start by making it as an empty list which is then ready for us to use later in the program. Line 1 of this program creates a list named trees that is empty. Line 2 prints out this empty list. Line 3 creates a variable new tree and stores the string ash in it. Line 4 appends what is in variable new tree to the end of the list. As before this point the list was empty, the string ash is put into element 0. Line 5 changes what is stored in variable new tree, replacing the string ash with the new string oak. Line 6 appends what is stored in variable new tree to the end of the list. So oak is put into the list as element 1. The final line of the program outputs the state of the list at the end of the program. Each element in a Python list can contain data that is either a string or an integer or a float or a boolean. All the lists we have looked at so far contain strings. It is important to know that in Python lists you can have different data types in different elements. For example, element 0 could be a string, element 1 could be an integer, etc. This is different from arrays where all the elements have to be the same data type. In this next program, all the elements of the list contain integers. Line 1 creates an empty list named marks. Line 2 starts a for loop that will loop 4 5 times. The first time round the loop 0 will be in variable count, the second time round the loop 1 will be in variable count, the third time round the loop 2 will be in variable count, the fourth time round the loop 3 will be in variable count, and the last time round the loop 4 will be in variable count. Each time round the loop, the instruction enter pupil score will be output on the screen. The user will then enter an integer which will be stored in a variable named score. The program will then append whatever is in variable score to the end of the marks list. I ran the program and the first time round the loop I entered 3, which got stored in index 0. The second time round the loop I entered 8 which got stored in the index position 1. The third time round the loop I entered 5 which got stored at index position 2. The fourth time round the loop I entered 6 which got stored at index position 3. The last time round the loop I entered 2 which got stored at index position 4. When the for loop is finished, the program outputs what is now stored in list marks. This program creates a list named marks and stores four integers in it, 2, 8, 4 and 1. Line 2 creates a variable named total and stores the integer 0 inside it. A for loop is started in line 3 that repeats for the number of times that there are elements in the list, so it repeats four times. Each time round the loop, it finds what is currently in variable total and what is in the element at index position count of the list. Remember, variable count gets a different integer stored in it each time round the loop. If you are confused by for loops, go back and watch the for loop video. It then adds these two values together. 
and the result is stored in variable total, replacing whatever was in there before. At the start of the first time round the loop, variable total has zero in it. Variable count also has zero in it. So the value stored at marks position count, which is position zero, is added to the value in total and zero plus two equals two. So the value in total is now 2. Next time round the loop, the value in variable count gets changed to 1. Total is currently 2. Because count is now 1, we look for the value in marks position 1. And we add that value, 8, to the value in total 2 to give us a new total of 10, which replaces what was in total before. Third time round the loop, the value in variable count gets changed to 2. We check what is in variable total, it is 10. We go to marks position 2 and we find that we have 4 in there. We add 4 and 10 together which makes 14, so the value in variable total gets changed to 14. The final time round the loop, the value in variable count gets changed to 3. We have a look at what's stored in variable total and find it is 14. We go to marks position 3 and we find that we've got 1 stored in there. 14 add 1 is 15, so the value in variable total gets changed to 15. At the end of the loop, the value stored in variable total is 15. After the loop is finished, line 5 outputs the list contains, followed by what is stored in list marks, and then the last line of the program outputs what is stored in variable total, 15. This program again creates a list named marks with four elements each storing an integer, 2, 8, 4 and 1. Line 2 prints out the list at the start of the program. Line 3 changes what is stored in element 1 of the list. The program started with 8 stored in element 1 of the list, but line 3 changes this to 3. So now we have 3 stored at element 1 of the list. The final line of the program outputs what the list looks like at the end of the program. Our final program again starts by creating a list named marks with four elements in it. It then outputs what the list looks like at the start. Line 3 uses pop to pop element 1 out of the list. This means element 1 is taken out of the list. So the list started with four elements but finishes with three elements. The original element 2 is now element 1, the original element 3 is now element 2. The final line of code outputs the list at the end of the program. Python has lots of built-in functions and methods that you can use with lists. In this video we've only looked at len, append and pop. There are many websites that describe the different list functions and methods available.